CompTIA A+, Core 2, 220-1102, Practice PBQs. This video is part of our PBQ video series and is filled with information that will help you tackle some of CompTIA's challenging performance-based questions. In this particular video we will be discussing Mobile Device Connectivity Wireless connectivity is the beating heart of modern mobile devices, enabling seamless interaction with the digital world. From Wi-Fi that keeps you connected to the internet, to Bluetooth that links your headphones and wearables, to NFC powering quick payments and file transfers, these technologies eliminate the need for physical connections and open up a world of convenience. Your mobile device offers several types of network connections, each with a unique purpose and functionality. In this video, we will explore how to enable, disable, and optimize a few of these connection types. For our first connection type, we have Bluetooth. This is a wireless networking interface and peripheral device interface standard that uses radio frequencies to share data over a short distance of a few meters or yards. With Bluetooth, you can connect devices, like smartphones and tablets, to headphones and speakers, and even car audio systems, without the hassle of wires. It's a technology that's all about convenience, enabling things like listening to music on wireless headphones or sharing files quickly between devices. But to do this, you first need to know a bit more about Bluetooth pairing. Pairing is the process of establishing a secure wireless connection between two Bluetooth-enabled devices so they can communicate with each other. And this pairing process starts by enabling Bluetooth connections in the settings menu of your mobile device. Once your Bluetooth antenna is enabled and connections are allowed, the next step in the pairing process begins with placing the Bluetooth device you want to connect with into pairing mode. This is usually done by holding a button on the device, such as a long press on the power button of Bluetooth headphones. This puts the device into a state where it actively looks to connect with other Bluetooth-enabled devices. Next, you'll go back to the first device and search for available devices. This is generally done within the Bluetooth settings page, where you can scan for new devices. Once the second device appears on the list, you can select it to initiate the pairing process. Sometimes, you may need to enter a PIN code to complete the pairing. In the Bluetooth pairing process, entering a PIN code is an additional security measure to ensure that only users with the correct permissions can establish a connection between devices. The necessity of entering this code prevents unauthorized users from connecting to your device because, without the correct PIN, the connection cannot be completed. This step is particularly important when pairing devices in public spaces, where multiple Bluetooth devices might be present and the risk of an unintended or malicious connection is higher. After the devices are paired, they'll remember each other unless you choose to disconnect them or remove the pairing, meaning you won't have to go through the setup process every time. Lastly, disabling Bluetooth on your device is a straightforward way to conserve battery life and increase security. When you disable Bluetooth, you effectively cut off the wireless communication channel ensuring that no Bluetooth connections can be made to your device without your consent. And to disable Bluetooth, just toggle the setting to the off position and you're done. Next, we will cover some basic connectivity settings for Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is one of the most important tools for keeping your mobile device connected to the internet, providing fast, reliable access to the digital world without the need for cables. Understanding how to manage Wi-Fi settings on your mobile device ensures you stay connected securely and efficiently, whether at home, work, or on the go. Managing your Wi-Fi connection starts with toggling it on or off. This can be done through your device's settings menu or the quick settings panel. Turning the Wi-Fi on powers up the antenna, allowing your device to scan for available networks and display their names, known as SSIDs, or service set identifiers. When the Wi-Fi is turned off, the antenna powers down. This saves battery life and stops the device from continuously searching for available networks. With that said, each Wi-Fi network broadcasts an SSID to identify itself. When you connect to a network, your device will remember it and attempt to reconnect automatically in the future. However, as you move from one location to another, say, from home to work, your device may remain connected to a network that's out of range leading to a loss of internet access. To avoid this, check your current SSID in the Wi-Fi settings and manually connect to the correct available network if needed. 
Additionally, Wi-Fi networks operate using a variety of 802.11 standards, which determine the speed, range, and frequency band of the connection. Some of the most common standards include 802.11b, 802.11a, 802.11g, 802.11n, 802.11ac, and 802.11ax. Next, we will take a closer look at frequency bands. Depending on the 802.11 standard you select, you will effectively transmit and receive information within a predetermined frequency band. As for Wi-Fi networks, they will typically operate on either the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band. The first frequency band we will discuss is the 2.4 GHz band. It's like a slow but steady marathon runner. The 2.4 GHz band offers better range, meaning it can travel further. This characteristic makes it ideal for providing Wi-Fi coverage in larger spaces. The 2.4 GHz band can also penetrate solid objects like walls more effectively. However, since it's quite popular, the 2.4 GHz band can get crowded, leading to potential interference from other devices that also use this frequency. Now, let's meet our speedy sprinter, the 5 GHz band. It may not travel as far as the 2.4 GHz band, but it offers faster and more reliable connections over shorter distances. Due to its higher frequency, the 5 GHz band can handle more data, making it ideal for higher bandwidth tasks like HD video streaming, online gaming, and file transfers. Additionally, since the 5 GHz band is less crowded, it experiences less interference, providing a smoother and more consistent Wi-Fi experience. To illustrate the practical differences between these bands, imagine an office environment with a Wi-Fi access point positioned towards the center of the space to provide coverage throughout. Then imagine a tablet in a conference room located at the far corner of the office attempting to connect to the network. The 2.4 GHz band, with its superior range and ability to penetrate walls, reaches the tablet with a reliable, albeit slower, connection. However, the 5 GHz band, designed for speed rather than range, struggles to maintain a connection or may not reach the conference room at all. This is because the higher frequency signals of the 5 GHz band weaken more quickly as they pass through walls and over distances. This scenario demonstrates how the placement of devices and access points, combined with an understanding of frequency bands, impacts connectivity. The Wi-Fi coverage map, which may also be referred to as a heat map, shows how the 2.4 GHz band provides extended coverage to the conference room, while the 5 GHz band is shown to have a more limited range. Now that we've covered the basics of Wi-Fi connectivity, let's talk about wireless security modes, your first line of defense against unauthorized access and potential cyber threats. Wi-Fi networks use security protocols to encrypt data and ensure that only authorized devices can connect. Therefore, choosing the right security mode is critical for keeping your network safe. When selecting a security mode, our first option would be to completely disable wireless security, sometimes referred to as open authentication. This is not recommended in most cases, as it leaves your network vulnerable to unauthorized access and data interception. It's like leaving your front door unlocked, allowing anyone to enter your home without restriction. While this option offers easy connection due to no password requirement, it comes at the cost of compromising network security. Next, we have the option to enable WEP, or Wired Equivalent Privacy Encryption. WEP employs the RC4 algorithm for encryption and decryption of data packets. While WEP was once commonly used, it's now considered insecure due to its susceptibility to attacks. Think of it as using a flimsy lock on your front door. It might offer some protection, but it's easy for someone with malicious intent to bypass. Enabling WEP might provide basic security, but it's not recommended for modern networks due to its vulnerabilities. Moving on, we have WPA, or Wi-Fi Protected Access. Enabling WPA significantly enhances security compared to WEP by offering stronger encryption and authentication mechanisms. WPA uses TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, for encryption. You can think of WPA as upgrading from a flimsy lock to a sturdy deadbolt on your front door. Moving further up the ladder of security, we come to WPA2, or Wi-Fi Protected Access 2. 
Enabling WPA2 builds upon the foundation of WPA by employing AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, as its encryption algorithm. This provides even stronger protection for your wireless network compared to WPA. Using WPA2 is like upgrading from a sturdy deadbolt to a sophisticated security system with motion sensors and surveillance cameras. Finally, we have the option to enable WPA3 or Wi-Fi Protected Access 3 encryption. Here we introduce the SAE, or Simultaneous Authentication of Equals protocol. This provides enhanced protection against various security threats, including brute force attacks and password guessing, making it significantly more resilient than its predecessors. However, it's important to note that not every device supports WPA3, yet. Nonetheless, when available, WPA3 is a great choice for ensuring the highest level of security for your wireless network. Ultimately, the selection of the appropriate security mode depends on your specific security requirements. Factors affecting your selection will most likely include device compatibility, desired level of security, and ease of network connectivity. Now you know a bit more about mobile device connectivity. If you encounter a PBQ related to this topic during your CompTIA A Plus Core 2 exam, you should have a solid foundation to tackle any scenario confidently. Whether it's connecting a device to a network, troubleshooting signal issues, or ensuring a secure connection, you're equipped with the knowledge to solve it. Keep practicing, stay curious, and you'll certainly ace those PBQs with ease. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.